Good afternoon. Um, I'm here with uh, Kent Earl out at the, what's the name of your project here? The Blue Heron Eco House. The Blue Heron Eco House. So how we got to this Blue Heron Eco House was that um, I actually worked with uh, Kent's mom, Lynn, on a U of S project. And uh, she asked if she could bring Kent and Darcy over to our place and where we built our net zero home. And uh, I thought Kent just wanted to learn from all the lessons that we had on the three different designs that we had gone through. And as it turns out, he actually needed somebody to help him with the uh, design and construction and project management of this facility. And so lo and behold, here we are. Um, Kent, uh, you know, why did you go so green? You know, like I understand that your house is on a passive house tour next weekend. Right. Yeah, what motivated you to, to, to go such high performance? Um, I think from our perspective, we wanted to make sure that we built a house that would last for a long time. We didn't want to build a house that we'd just be moving from and into something else. So we were investing really in, uh, in a long-term home for ourselves that we want to be in until we really can't be in a house anymore. And from the perspective of climate change and where things are looking like they're going in the future, we wanted to reduce our impact as much as possible uh, in the future. Okay. So um, this, uh, the time that you contacted me and told me about your tours, about the time I'm writing this Lean Project Facilitator course and had just finished coming up with an assignment for the, the students to learn different strategies for residents. And so we, when you came over to our place, we had, there was all, you know, there's so many different options and, and the types of systems that we were going to put in. And we started sharing papers and research back and forth. And, uh, you know, one of the things I recall was, you know, we can't afford to put solar hot water heating on a roof anymore. We just PV panels. Right. And then you, you did a lot of research yourself and, uh, double wall construction. Remember how we, we used choosing by advantages to, uh, um, f figure out whether we would do prefab like we did for our house with more insulation on the outside or double wall. So are you happy with the way the decision that was made to go double wall construction? And uh, Definitely. Um, so tell us that, a bit about the wall construction. Yeah, um, that, that whole process was really valuable for us to see the differences between the two. Uh, in our case with the double wall construction, uh, the way it's built is with two two by four walls, uh, one two by four on the inside spaced eight inches apart from the other one which gives you a total depth of 16 inches. Uh, the simple footing is just a 3 8 uh, OSB on the top and bottom with then your uh, 2x4 footer on uh, the bottom and we did a double plate for the concrete floor as well. Uh, so the cost effectiveness of that is really good because you're using 2x4s instead of 2x6s and less foam and uh, so the lumber costs so are very reasonable. Say Right? And less foam. So we tell, foam. Tell, yeah. tell us about so, our, I remember our pole planning session, we ended up bringing out the, the insulator guy. Did he turn out to be as good as? Yeah, he was great. Okay. Yeah, wealth, no, wealth of knowledge. He was you, awesome. Oh, wasn't he ever? Um, he, you know, that gets down to the, the wealth of bringing contractors into the process yeah. early. And, yeah. Uh, and he was actually the guy that did Rob Dumont's house as well, right? Right. So, he had that experience dating back, which this house is actually the same wall system that he used too, right? So um, we used instead of foam, which in you know, my perspective is gasoline or oil on the outside of your house <laughs> rather than right. um, recycled materials, which is what we used in dense packed cellulose. So dense packed cellulose. Dense, yeah. pack, dense packed cellulose in the walls, loose packed in the ceiling. Okay. The attic. So then that kind of got us to, you know, you're spending all this money on the, the wall system and we didn't put in floor heating in there because we didn't think that we would need it. And we had, there were some, there's some costs associated with that, but you did go with in floor heating. And uh, I guess it's still a little too early to tell, but mm -hmm. it ended up being a very, fairly cost effective, simple system anyways, I think. I think so. Um, you know, with the house, we have concrete floors, so you get lots of solar gain. There is some drawback of saying, well, maybe you don't get as much thermal uh, mass effect uh, with in-floor heat already taking the edge off of it a little bit. But um, 
you know, the northern north side of the house, uh, you know, you get a nice, comfortable, warm floor. E yes. And, uh, uh, I think that's key because this south part where we're facing will possibly doesn't need that in-floor yeah. heating as much other than when it's minus 40 and it's not, that's right. the sun's not shining, but you get to transfer the energy from this side of the house to the other side, which is that's a right. definite advantage. And what we did do here is the pipes are spaced 12 inches apart on this side, rather, which is a little bit more. And on the other side, they're eight inches, which is standard spacing. Okay, and do you have a strategy where the, the way the pipes are run that you're yeah. gonna, yeah. So it's split down the middle. Okay, so you, but you're gonna take, pick up the heat from this south side and be able to take it into the north zone? No, it runs this way. Okay, east-west. East-west, so 12 inch spacing this side, eight inches on the other. Okay, um, do, we, do we, we wanna talk about the, you got five minutes story? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs> well, you know, I got a call. This is early in the project and uh, May long weekend, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes, the realities the, of building. The realities of building. All of a sudden, we're, you know, a contractor saying it's going to cost $10,000 more and, and we've got this place designed. We're in the ground. And um, so this, this, we ended up coming and finding a solution. It was about shit flows downhill. That's right. <laughs> right. We, you know, we're built into the side of a house. We needed to get to the septic tank. The contractor saying, "No, you 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 can't do it with the the layout that we have." And uh, so that was kind of an unfortunate thing. But we ended up having to let one contractor go. That's right. <laughs> he came to a meeting and said he got five minutes. And Kent and I both that night, I was so mad. And by eight o'clock in the morning, you'd come to the same conclusion that sometimes you just for the the team you need to, to yeah. make some changes and uh well and, and the fortunate part about our construction is that everybody who we did have working on the house in the end was excellent and yeah, everybody did a really good job it cost getting rid of a few people along the way but we got rid of them before you know they actually caused problems yeah so i think from a, a lead facilitator point of view it, it do your due diligence and get the right people on the job absolutely okay um <laughs> um, happy with the schedule? I, I know we, we were just talking about we, an aggressive schedule would have been Darcy's birthday, which was October 14th. Yeah. We're just past Halloween here. Actually, it's Remembrance Day today. I've got my, my poppy on. Remembrance Day here in Canada. And, um, and so, but we, we started in May. So what's that end, end up being for schedule wise? Right now we're just over six months. Six months of a build out of town. Yeah. Um, you know, two stories, double wall construction. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're happy. Yeah. We wanted to be in by Christmas. We'll be in before Christmas. So yeah. Yeah. awesome. And you know, I think budget wise with your, a lot of sweat equity here. I'm, I'm holding Kent up from, from doing building this house. Um, I, what, what's the final cost going to be for a double wall construction, high performance, beautiful home? Out here, what are you? What are you going to be at dollars per square foot? Per square foot, I think we're going to be around two seventy five square foot. Two seventy five. Yeah, but that includes all the infrastructure, which puts it higher out here, yeah. Rural, yeah. right? With the septic and the the yeah. water system that we have to do. Probably residential in the city would be looking around two fifty. Yeah, I, it was. Yeah, so if, I think if you took that infrastructure cost and you you put into account your your sweat equity into the building, that you 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 got good value for. For, for this project. Now, um, Kent, I really, your Blue Heron website, you, mm -hmm. you, you, besides being so busy, um, you know, building, helping to build your own home and a high performance home like this, and you're, you, you're finding the time to have a website to promote what you're doing here. So tell, well, me, tell me why and, and, and what's that all about? Well, it's, you know, it's not so much promotion, but I would say it's, uh, it's cathartic, <laughs> therapeutic for myself, <laughs> um, <laughs> but also it's uh, um, when we were researching about the house and we spent about a year planning it, I read a ton of research articles, I read a lot of blogs, I read a lot of websites to find information and but some things I found a lot of information on, other things that I wanted to do we didn't have the information on. So I wanted to write something so that, you know, the next person coming down the road, maybe there'd be something of value that they found in ours. So, and I have gotten a number of people already saying that they have found it valuable. So that's, you know, rewarding. You know, and I think that you find that in the green building industry that people just, 
there's so many tough decisions and you got to research and mm -hmm. so really appreciate that you you've done that and uh so there's a, a passive tour coming up this next weekend yeah. um even this is not a passive house certified project that's right because it's so it's a passive design and it's double wall construction yeah. that you qualified to be in the upper echelon of, of home building in in canada so yeah, yeah that's pretty cool so we uh you know it, it's not a passive house it's close um but we followed the principles that they used and uh, we were asked to be involved in it which we thought was really great to be asked to be involved even though we're not a fully certified passive house yeah. so. so when I, I first came to the site today i just i see the panels are all up how big is uh, a system did you put 6. in? 6.2 kilowatts. Okay, so that's the same size as, as my house. Mm -hmm. And do you expect to be at net zero with that? I think we'll be close. Um, it's hard to say to be 100%, but I think we're going to be very close. Yeah. And, you know, the, the net zero thing is so... There's a little bit on either side, right? Yeah. Some years you might be, some years you might not be. So hopefully overall we'll be close. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, awesome. Thanks for taking on such a, a great project and uh, and for your time today. I should probably let you get back to work. And before I turn the camera off, I'm just going to treat you all to just a an awesome view here of uh, on the South Saskatchewan River. Um, just like check out that million dollar view. I don't, I don't know what else to do, but I, you know, it's just like, wow. So, um, Kent Murray signing off from... Uh, the, the Blue Heron, the name of your project Eco, again? The Blue Heron Eco House. Okay, and and the web, just basically search for that on the, the on the website. Yeah, the website yeah. is blueheronhaus, H-A-U-S.com. Okay. okay, awesome. awesome. Signing off. Thanks.